Wilmington and Linfield. And the commissioners recognize the importance of public comment. We ask that all questions and comments from the public be directed to the chair and all parties, including members of the board, act in a professional manner. Um, I think we can move on to the agenda. And today we will have Phil as the board secretary. Yep. Okay. And uh, Karen Herrick is not here today from the FinCom. Uh, she usually is. I think tonight we will address the questions about uh, their, our appearance at the FinCom financial forum later in the fall. Um, and Jason Small, hello, uh, um, from the cab. Hi, Jason. And um, so pu public comment, I don't know that we have any, but we had a lot of members of the public last meeting, but you just they seem to have decided not to come back. Um, so is there a report from the cab, Jason? Okay. Um, okay. So minutes, we don't have minutes to approve, is that correct? Okay. Um, okay, and uh, do you want to, uh, John, briefly address the cab meeting that just took place? Sure. Yeah, I'd be, be happy to. There are a few things. We, we cover quite a few things. It was a good meeting. Um, the manager covered some uh, heat-related uh, uh, issues uh, for this upcoming weekend, which I think we'll talk about here probably a little bit later. Uh, the uh, department is also working on a a letter for the 10-year extension um, for the 20-year program uh, that uh, will occur in July of, of 2020, but the letter will be sent out uh, much earlier. Uh, let's see, the uh, uh, Neil Cohen, uh, one of the uh, a member of the CAB, uh, has uh, stepped down from the board, and in, as we understand it, it will go through the normal process of, or the historical process anyway, of the selectmen uh, reviewing candidates. And appointing someone uh, sure. to the CIB. Let Vivek know that. Let Vivek know that. <laughs> you know? yeah, and, and Vivek does know it. Okay, yeah, good. He's very, very interested. Uh, yes, as well, and very qualified, obviously. And uh, the fourth most uh, interesting thing I think we uh, we found was that the Linfield uh, uh, board has their meetings over at the marketplace uh, in some restaurant. So <laughs> we're thinking perhaps we ought to take that up for consideration. <laughs> Our board meetings. <laughs> Like Davio's or something. Interesting restaurant. Um, okay, thank you, John. Uh, and we move on to the general manager's report. Colleen has a couple of items she wants to cover. Okay, thanks. Yep. Um, I, I will discuss the heat wave uh, first. Um, we have projected heat wave for the weekend, and I just want to remind everyone that the RMLD is in storm preparation mode even though it's heat uh, versus uh, snowstorm. We do similar um, action to prepare for that. When it comes to heat, uh, the um, Convex or National Grid and Eversource, they can send us um, operating procedures, OP4s, which may request for mandated public appeals through ISO. It starts off with um, just a simple public appeal to conserve, uh, and then it could go to a, um, a power warning the next step would then be like a 5% voltage reduction, and then lastly, uh, a load shed, which could be, uh, you know, a loss of power on certain feeders. Um, in my history, we've never gone that far. Usually, uh, the public, through public appeal, people will, you know, turn up their air conditioners and everyone will attempt to conserve. We'll be running the batteries and the, um, and the generators for both days. And usually, collectively, with all of the utilities throughout New England, uh, we're able to prevent any, anything uh, more of a harsh curtail curtailment from happening. Um, so just a reminder, uh, the liaison phone, the GM liaison phone, is, is being issued for town officials. Uh, they've gotten that email. Uh, we've already tweeted out notifications about the heat. Uh, we will continu continue to tweet out information um, about outages, as we've done in the past. Um, and uh, I would anticipate that all we would typically see is maybe some fuses melting from overloaded transformers uh, that typically happen during hot days. I don't anticipate that we're going to have any uh, major issues, but crossing our fingers along with our transmission providers that there's no uh, grid problems. But we will tweet out everything as it become, as the information becomes available in any estimated time of restorations. Is it lucky that it's a weekend versus Friday? Um, it can be because the load would be lighter for uh, people, you know, a lot of people are not working. 
Uh, some things that do happen that you want to be careful of is voltage sensitive equipment uh, like solid state equipment, computers and stuff like that. Best to shut them down Friday at the end of the business day. Uh, sometimes companies, if, if they do lose power, the air conditioners don't reset and uh, sensitive equipment don't like heat. Uh, in the building, we don't want anything to get damaged. Uh, so any voltage sensitive equipment, um, careful to shut all that down. Um, but um, fingers crossed, I think we'll probably do well. We're coordinating with all the towns for their evacuation sites, and those are posted on our website. Evacuation site meaning a place that's, that's air conditioned and cool that uh, people can uh, she seek shelter for that. A cooling center, I believe. Cooling a center. Cooling center, yeah. So, okay, thank you. We have so the battery is up and running. Do the generators? Mm -hmm. Sorry? No, I was asking if this facility was a bit. I don't think it is. No, unfortunately, it's. it's <laughs> we'll know. be here, yeah. and, but we don't have yeah. the facilities for. Uh, and, it's a, and it's a NERC uh, security area, so. Right. Okay, if there's no questions on the heat, I'll move on to the town of Reading payment. Um, so uh, with the help of Energy New England, they're conducting a study which we had talked about um, in the past. Uh, they've provided an update. We're looking to get a draft of the, of the uh, study at the beginning of September. At that time, it would be my, um, I would be sending it out to the commission. Uh, and then I uh, would like to be able to put it on the September uh, agenda. Um, to discuss it at that point. So that's that's the plan right now that um, of where we are. The, the, just to reiterate, you know what the study is about. Um, it's uh, we're looking at similar to the study that was already performed. We're looking at payment comparisons as it relates to other towns, other municipals. Um, American Public Power Association and what typically payment of in lieu of taxes or whatever you call them, return on investments are uh, throughout the country and specifically in this area. Um, and then the payment compared to the RMLD financials and those are the financials both present and also as projected. So uh, similar uh, objectives as the last one but updated with new information um, and done by a third party. So. Um, you know, I think we're all quite interested to see where it comes in and, and have that discussion. And just if you could just explain what, what, what is Energy New England, I mean, we know what it is, but anybody who might be watching the meeting, Henry, what, just explain what it is. It's a quasi-joint action um, agency that performs a lot of studies that are very familiar with uh, um, municipals and the IOUs, uh, legislative um, um, for this industry. And... Um, Meaning the municipal... Right, and right. The They're definitely experts in um, in the field to yeah. be able to. Uh, they've done a lot of different studies yeah. on this type of topic. It's okay. And it, it, would, it would be my intention, as you said, when when uh, when you get the study and it's ready, we can have that. We'll have a public meeting, and perhaps we can have a presentation on it at that time for the uh, for ourselves and for the public. Right. Okay. Perfect. Um, so the last thing I had uh, was. So um, a couple meetings ago, Karen Herrick, the, our uh, liaison for the Finance Committee, had requested some information at the meeting on the fund balances that were in our audit report, in which the auditor explains what each fund was. And I, uh, I said she wanted more information, so I told her I would put together um, some extended versions as they relate to policy votes and things like that. Um, in addition to that, she wanted some comparisons with other utilities, and I've written a narrative uh, on that. So uh, most of that information is compiled and ready to go, but I was also requested by the town manager to have a, um, a formal meeting with the Finance Committee on November 6th and that those questions would be forthcoming before the meeting for our, to be prepared. So I can email Karen and talk to her. Um, I didn't know if we wanted to just put all the questions together so that we could do a presentation. It would probably be me, Wendy, and Chuck going, um, and then just do it that way. Um, you know, so I'll just email her and, and, and let her know. Okay. Uh, okay. And, she can, and she can let me know. Okay, that sounds great. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Do you have anything else? No, thank you. Thank you. Um, check with the power supply report. Thank you. Good evening.
couple of quick updates before I bore you all to tears with the, uh, the routine aspects of the power supply report. Uh, I have a new uh, senior power supply analyst. Uh, he has been on board for um, about three weeks now. He was actually at the uh, solar workshop that we had. Uh, I'm not sure if you all had a chance to meet him, it but meet uh, him. Uh, I do mention it uh, this evening. Uh, he's uh, working out very well, so I'm uh, very excited about that. That leaves me two and a half positions in the department uh, vacant, and we have had candidate interviews for uh, all of those positions, and uh, we're in the process of preparing final recommendations for the general manager's consideration, but I expect that uh, we'll be moving forward to get our staffing levels uh, back up to uh, where we uh, need them to be. Uh, that will get us uh, ready to uh, jumpstart some of the uh, programs that, that we've committed to. Uh, an update from the solar workshop. Um, we have uh, 11 solar applications under the new joint DOER uh, municipal program. We have one that was submitted that uh, requires a little more information before we can uh, turn it over to our engineering and operations group for their review. We have four that are currently under review with engineering and operations. We have four that have completed that. Uh, we need to get a little more information from the applicants and then those will be turned over uh, through Energy New England to DOER for approval. And we have two that Energy New England is completing uh, the analysis uh, for uh, verification of rebates. So that's uh, the solar activity that's uh, currently going on in RMLD's Great. service territory. Thank you. Um, now on to the power supply. And I know that you've all uh, looked at the uh, reports very carefully and have noticed that the, um, the numbers are a little different this month going forward. One of the reasons for that is we took um, the power supply budget that we got from Energy New England and put that in place for the rest of the year. It updates uh, the estimates that we've been using by about a year, gives more current uh, market prices uh, in there, and um, so that makes some, some slight changes um, that uh, go forward. However, uh, I am sorry to report there are no uh, abnormal activities. Everything continues to go along smoothly. The prices for the first five months of the year uh, remained uh, stable and a little bit lower than expected in the market. Uh, the contracts are performing. Uh, loads are down a little bit, so we've been uh, selling into the market. Uh, on the other hand, June was the hottest uh, month on record. Uh, so we expect that we will see an increase in sales in June, and July is on track to be the hottest uh, July on record and the hottest uh, month on record as well. So uh, expecting to see uh, some air conditioning sales pushing uh, the load up. Um, but in the uh, meantime, uh, as you can see, the actuals are still performing a little bit better than budget, and so uh, we continue to uh, improve a little bit on our uh, power supply margin and uh, are tracking very well for reaching our targets uh, at the end of the year. This is the overall. Uh, next, please. 80% uh, of our budget is in energy. and. You can see how energy is tracking. Uh, the dark green is actual. The dotted, uh, the green solid is actual. The dashed green is projected uh, for the rest of the year. So uh, very stable uh, based on what we expect to have happen. Uh, next up, please. Uh, <coughs> capacity costs, again, coming in slightly below average and expected to remain uh, stable. and. Lastly is transmission, and also uh, tracking well, but because May was cooler than anticipated, uh, we did not reach the transmission peak and did not incur the transmission costs uh, that we anticipated, so that's why that didn't jump 
uh, in May. On the other hand, we're going to see uh, a catch up to where we expected to be in, in June. So, uh, again, things are going very well with power supply and uh, nothing exciting to report. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, Chuck, so uh, I just wanted to go back to uh, the uh, solar workshop and just comment for, I guess, the listening audience and those who weren't there that it was a very uh, helpful and informative session. I, th I think uh, uh, it was uh, well organized and I think we got a lot of good feedback. So kudos to Green and Thank you. To, Thank you. to you, Chuck, specifically. I did have one question and you may have said it, I, I missed it. So. I thought that we had talked about the possibility at some point of maybe, uh, in addition to whatever other information we had, putting together like a Q&A, because there were some good things that we talked about that obviously weren't in any hands or anything because they came up in the dialogue and discussion. So is that something that will happen or is that uh, useful? Yes, that, that is something that uh, we'll put together. What we have done is taken uh, the results of the uh, solar workshop and incorporated them into a presentation uh, on the uh, RMLD website, including uh, the referrals that we had at the end to a couple of uh, state-sponsored and solar-sponsored uh, uh, references, uh, and we will put together uh, the Q&A. Uh, we'll been a little distracted trying to get some other stuff going, yeah, but yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and you're right, the staff did a phenomenal job uh, pulling that together as well as the battery uh, storage uh, ribbon cutting ceremony that we had. Uh, so they're a very impressive group to, to work with. Yeah, no, that, that also was a terrific uh, opportunity, I think, and it was good publicity for, I think, for RMLD in terms of what's being done. And, you know, within the state. And the state. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a great project. And uh, a couple of folks called out, you know, staff and called out also Tom. So I guess he was a, he was a big player there, too. Not me. Not you, Tom. No, definitely not you. Yeah, no. I think people knew that. Anyway. <laughs> um, I think Tom Alula. So, but all the staff that worked on it. And, um, you know, so thanks, everybody. We, we've been doing a lot of exciting stuff. Yes. And, uh, even with the um, changes in the in the staff, we've yep. uh, continued to uh, which progress. Me, which bring me to my point. I noticed on my bill this month that the solar project one and two are both showing credits on the bill: fifteen dollars on solar project one and fifty and two dollars on solar project two. So another good thing. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. We'll get your bill fixed on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll take it, Jack. <laughs> Will there be a, is there a possibility of a, of a solar project three? Yes, uh, we're looking at structuring it a little bit differently, but uh, yes, we are looking at uh, solar project three. Um, that was the one thing I think I, I wish we had gotten a little more credit for uh, in the workshop. Um, we it, it was presented that we do not have quite as many residential. Uh, program participants, and one of the reasons for that is that we have a couple of hundred uh, residential customers participating in the Solar Choice Program as their investment opportunity in solar, rather than being able to put it on their own property. That's a, that's a great point. I think that might find its way in the Q and A. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and as we now learn. Phil is one of those who is a participant, and uh, oh, yeah. the entire board is. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm. Yep. Well, let's move on. <laughs> no, I'm not actually. Uh, I think I asked. I asked to be put on, and it was all. It was fully subscribed. I do have a, I do have a time use meter, and I do have an electric car, so it makes up for it. Okay. Oh. But be the first for the garden solo. <laughs> so it will be the first. Anyway, but well, uh, us double members get priority, don't we, Colleen? Is what we call. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, that we thank you. It would be great to have more of those because I think there's a lot of demand out there, meaning people who want to be participants. Any other questions? No. no. Uh, and I, I don't know if it was said clearly enough, but uh, Chuck, you specifically did a great job. That's a hard 
thing to do to present uh, that topic for 45 minutes <laughs> and then field all the questions. So, uh, it was a friendlier audience than I am used to having in a lot of the other uh, <laughs> public power presentations I have done. Yeah, we didn't have to clean up the room or anything. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Chuck. Yep. Ready? Financials? Thank you. Good evening. So I'm reporting uh, tonight on the first five months of calendar year 19, ended May 31st, 2019. Uh, you have the financials in front of you, but I have a uh, short slide presentation here just uh, to give you some highlights of what's going on in the financials. So uh, for the first five months, unrestricted cash of $18.5 million covers about two and a half months of the average monthly operating expenses of $7.2 million as of 531.19. Accounts receivable are 98% current, which is up to 90 days for the reflection of timing. Net plant increased by about $800,000 as compared to 531.18. Uh, base revenue increased 4% from uh, 531.18 to 531.19, with a decrease in kilowatt hour sales for the same period of about less than 1%. Purchase power fuel expense exceeds purchase power fuel revenue by about $1.5 million, and purchase power capacity and transmission revenue exceeds purchase power capacity and transmission expenses by uh, about $150,000. Total operating and maintenance expenses are under budget currently at 13%. So the next slide shows you the uh, pie chart of the cash balances um, as of 531. Total cash of $51.5 million. Specifically, the operating fund, which is the unrestricted fund that I uh, just spoke about, with $18.5 million. The other funds, they're all restricted for specific um, areas, specifically the depreciation and construction fund, um, totaling about $9.9 .9 million. And uh, all the other funds are highlighted there. I'm not, I'm not going to read them if that's all right. But everything's there for you to look at. The next slide. I like to point this out once in a while just to remind you what our goals are. Operating cash in relation to the average monthly operating expenses um, from FY14 to CY19. We're up at uh, two and a half months of operating expenses in our cash, which, uh, as we've all heard many times from the auditors, the standard is three months, and uh, the senior team here believes Anywhere between two and three is really our goal so that we can prepare for capital expenditures coming up specifically relating to the uh, building of the substation. So we've come a long way in the, in the years that I presented here, and we are at a, um, I would say, a responsible position of two and a half months. The next slide just shows you the year-to-date operating and maintenance expenses. Um, actual as compared to budget. So January through May, we are, as I said, we're under budget about 13%, and uh, most of it has to do with the fact that we had a mild winter. We didn't have a lot of uh, expenses relating to storms, and we have a lot of transition and uh, retirees and opening positions. So, and I, I just want to reiterate as well, you cannot compare the first five months this year to the five months of last year because we were ending a year so projects uh, tend to, you know, um, ex be expedited at the end of a year to make sure that we meet our goals and whatnot. So we're at a different time in our year. So I just want to make that clear and remind everybody that comparing the two is just wouldn't do justice. And the last slide. Um, which I may change up a little bit next time, but it, it highlights our capital spending uh, as compared to the reserve that we have in our depreciation fund. So the pink, which is the middle block there, that shows you the amount of money that's reserved specifically for capital expenditures. Uh, and you can see on the purple bar, with the exception of FY15, which we were a little bit under, every year uh, so far we have exceeded the reserve um, uh, probably almost double with the capital expenditures of uh, increasing the infrastructure here and 
just not to um, mislead anyone, the green portion is the operating fund transfer. Now that's a strategic plan that we have among the uh, management here of how we're going to continue to fund capital projects in the future. So just because the uh, funding is higher, that's not to mislead you. It's for the purpose of the building of the substation that's coming up. So we have to make sure that we have enough capital funds in there in order to um, in order to have the, the money ready. And then, of course, um, we will we'll, whatever in the moment we will take the option to decide whether or not we're going to bond or not. And, and the cost of that substation, as we alerted the cab, was approximately nine. Approximately nine million dollars. It's about as high as that highest bar. Uh, because that's a $10 million bar. Right. And then, of course, take into account all the other capital projects we have ongoing and any other ones that we see needed to be added. Mm -hmm. That concludes my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thanks. So, 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 Wendy, I don't have a real good, strong visual on what I'm going to ask you to do, but I'm wondering, just for food for thought, uh, one of the things that, you know, we increasingly need to focus on is the kilowatt sales. Yes. And I'm wondering, uh, and maybe my colleagues have an opinion either way, is it possible to get um, maybe a visual that shows us, you know, year to date or, you know, kind of monthly, but also historically? So, I mean, uh, try to visualize, you know, where it is relative to, say, five years ago, but also each month, because it, it's obviously been flat and declining. and you know, having an eye on that so it doesn't, you know, because it can decline each month, but after a year it's like, wow. So right. I'm just wondering if that would... Well, I'll remind you that at the end of uh, 1231, we, we, we were above kilowatt hour sales, but we said uh, the reason for that was um, that the timing of the months. Yeah. And then in January, we had quite a big decrease, January and February. Yeah. And coming into uh, the end of May, we're at less than 1% of a decrease. And then it depends on how June and July do, uh, do at this point. But as you know, we're coming into our hotter months. And because of the change of the fiscal year to the calendar year, things look different. But yes, yeah. sure, I can. Yeah, I can which is probably a, a, a good reason to have that because you. Sure, I'm prepared for next time. Yeah, oh, great. Okay. okay. Thank you. Is that? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. I mean, engineering and operations report. Thank you. Good evening. I mean, my report is basically is up to date because uh, here to, uh, I'm going to give you the most up to date uh, activities. Basically, what's been going on. I like your cover. It sort of looks like a check request because you're usually asking for money this way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. actually not a check. We got actual check. <laughs> so. Uh, just to elaborate on uh, what Colin mentioned about the uh, uh, storm uh, preparation, which it's going to be heat wave in this case, but we are completely ready. Armel is there for the repairs and for our valued customers, just in case anything happens. I mean, the system reliability is good in good shape. Uh, I don't believe uh, you know we're going to have major troubles, but you never know. If in case the, we have problems with the national grid lines coming into the sub substations and they have major, obviously, then we're going to have to get into those uh, operational procedures that's set by and or forced by the grid and on New England ISO for voltage reductions and load shedding. And that, those are under extreme circumstances. I mean, like what Colin mentioned for past. I've been in this business for 35 years. I haven't seen one. So hopefully this is not going to happen either. But having said Mr. that. Chair, can I make yeah. I forgot to mention that so we have a general manager liaison phone that uh, we, we typically send out an email. Um, and Chuck is carrying it this weekend for, um, for, the, for the storm. Okay. So um, that's like public officials and whatever they're calling to ask, and not to notify for outages, but more question related. And uh, yeah, Joyce sent something this afternoon. Yeah, she sends it every time, yeah. and a lot of times she mans it. it it's different people at, at a management level. That's level. very well done, by the way. Thank right. you. And I'll be available so throughout the entire for the weekend. I'm not going to be on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
So uh, we're going to start with the major construction projects. This project 4W5, 4W12, it's completed. So this is done. That was one of the successful projects for underground transferring from the jammed uh, underground duct, duct bank to the uh, poles uh, going toward the west street. And that was done, completed successfully. The next one shows the battery storage project. Now that's a picture that the people were looking for, you know, the first picture. Yeah. <laughs> so you see that Mr. Uh, Pacino on the right, uh, the center, yeah. Tom Olilo and uh, Mr. Talbot. And I'm on the left and Colleen is on the right, so. <laughs> I, I'm just amazed at that piece of property. <laughs> You know, yeah. we went through to get it in the beginning. Yep. I wish I could tell you I, we visualized what it would become. But we're far from it. What, so, what's the backstory there? The backstory is is that that was and Brad, uh, Representative Jones did mention it. That is not the original piece of property we acquired. If you drive out of uh, North Reading Center and go up ha Haverhill Street, go under the lines, you look at the prop. There's a house up on the hill. Mm -hmm. That's the property we bought originally. But the neighbors, I guess, were not too happy when they learned what we were, what was going to happen there. So the the uh, the North Reading selectmen actually stepped in, and we swapped properties. We got the property that uh, the the manager at the time said this is a, this is the ideal property for us. So I'm amazed, you know, because I came early to the ribbon cutting right. and walked the property, and I'm just amazed what it's become. Yeah, that's great. Mm. I wish I could tell you we visualized that and when this board acquired that. But well, thank you for yeah. your blunt honesty. Yes. <laughs> what actually happened. Right. But next week, we're going to have the, we have invited the fire departments from all four towns. So we're going to go, we're going to give them a fire safety training. This is something that they need to know in case of the fire inside the substation. Uh, inside the, those battery storage uh, compartments, yeah, what to do because lithium ion batteries the worst thing you can do is uh, put water, water, water on it, or water on it, right? Yeah, so uh, next week they're going to be trained on it, and then they are preparing the operating procedure for that too for uh, electrical incident plan just in case there is anything electric that goes wrong, as well as the fire uh, incident plan so we're gonna have that whole procedure set up uh, so the people of control authorities they know what to do and the fire departments they know exactly what they're dealing with in the case of the fire and how to deal with it having said that then the next slide is talking about uh, the 4w6 and 4w6 means that the two feeders again the, the, the thermal stress relief project for the uh, station 4 uh, that we're trying to uh, uh, take some of the jammed uh, situation, compression situation of the duct bank in, inside the station <coughs> for out of the uh, uh, substation and you know and actually upgrading some of the uh, uh, cables. This is all, this was one of the projects that was uh, recommended by um, the that that was done back in 2015 to upgrade the getaways and uh, that's going very well it's in progress uh, we run into a little problem with the 4 w6 getaway we had uh, asbestos in one of the manholes and we did asbestos abatement so it took a little while to get rid of that uh, but the crews are back on it so this should be done within the next couple of weeks we should be completing it. The next one is a grid modernization of Skatermate switches. These are, we've installed uh, two of them. Three of them, uh, we're waiting on Verizon to set the poles. So Verizon, they've been setting lots of poles. You're gonna see that in future slides. That, you know, we got some poles in Reading and Linfield area. And if you see the number of uh, poles, they're going up and, you know, double poles. We're waiting for Verizon to set all the poles so we can go ahead and you know start transferring them so these are two huge projects that they're going on the way this is big chunk of you know those old uh, constructions that we are trying to eliminate and you're know, trying to, to rebuild so you're going to see that in uh, next two, uh, two slides so that's for grid modernization the next one is a Franklin and Grove Street Reading. That one is also going very well. That was the situation that we had the pole that uh, was deflected and it was leaning toward the street. It was so really a safety situation. Yeah. 
You saw that? They yeah, did drove by today. Yeah. yeah. So the crews are working on it. They're doing the trans transfers right now. We hit the ledge as we, as we expected. So it was really hard to put the anchors in the ledge. And uh, we set the poles and everything is uh, going uh, smooth as expected. So by next week, this project is going to be completed. And, you know, you know it's going to be good construction, uh, good safety. Uh, H transformer replacement project. This project is going very well. We have completed a number of those, uh, and we have uh, saved, I guess, substantial amount of money for oil release. So giving Joe less business. <laughs> <laughs> Joe is sitting back there. Joe Jamala, Mr. Jamala is uh, cushioning Jamala Wheelers. Uh, they are our environmental consultant. And they've been extremely helpful in managing, you know, the uh, the oil remediation process that you know we've been uh, they've been helping us with. So uh, we got some pro some of the transformers that we're still waiting to replace, and those are the ones that they're going to be done uh, in a timely manner uh, after the heat waves. So and those are the ones that you know you see in progress. Earls Row in Wilmington, the two pads that they got to be replaced. But I'm uh, proud to say that in the next slide you're going to see <coughs> about approximately 40 percent of those age transformers, uh, you know, the pad one transformers, the ones that they, they were about to release the oil into the environment, which would cost us more money and a lot of lots of money to uh, you know to uh, deal with that. So we have done an overhead about 25%. So this project is on track and making good pro progress. The rest of them, uh, the pole replacement, tree trimming, and inspection of the feeders, uh, they're going very well on those two. The infrared scan is uh, done. You know, like we recently did, did another one, and everything is safe and sound, so which is good uh, for carrying us through the heat wave. The manhole inspection is it's been undergone and the porcelain cutoff replacements as we upgrade the areas, you know, we replace those. The next one is the double poles engines. These are the areas that I talked about, 39 poles in Linfield and 33 poles in Reading. These are those two big projects that I was talking about. We were waiting for, you know, a few more poles that Verizon needs to set. And once they set them and they complete the settings, then we're going to be right after them transferring. These are going to be done before the end of the year. So this is huge, huge project. So and it's going to take care of lots of those old primary cables, transformers that are going to be upgraded, the secondaries and main and services, and everything from A to Z. So it's going to be completely rebuilt. So you'll see that. Uh, we don't go to North Reading, we got only three transfers and Wilmington about nine. So we try to keep them, you know, usually under uh, 10. So, uh, but it's a good thing. So we are upgrading these things. So the reliability, that's why reliability is getting better and better. So the next slide shows the reliability indices, SADI, KD, and SAFI. And as you could see, that we're all we're doing very well. Uh, they're all under the regional and uh, uh, national averages. So we are doing very well on those. The next slide is showing you the outages, the outage statistics. So we have exceeded in the motor vehicle accidents. So that's the only, uh, only area. And also the weather, we've had few uh, more than last year, uh, the weather incidents some unknowns that we didn't know exactly what they really caused them but in the other areas the equipment trees and the wildlife we are making progress on those so compared to the five years averages to month to month of June the pictures you see on the left this is the pole hit that happened on 221 West Street in Reading on May 24th 2019 and you could see that you know how much construction is involved that was a junction pole Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. It's not easy when the pole gets hit, really. It's a major undertaking because you got to keep those circuits live while you're doing the transfer. And uh, it's, it's really, they, they made, it made a huge damage to the pole. And mm -hmm. 
and you know, it costs a lot to, to do. Are, are the, are the, uh, the um, hits to the poles typically in the same pole uh, over time, do you know? Or is it different locations every time? Different locations every time. We have a database that we keep track of those, you know. And this is a, one of the major intersections. Yeah, this is this high is traffic area. Movement. This is a West Street and Movement. Yeah, uh, right. West Street and Movement. Right. Every day, twice, day. twice a day. Yeah, yeah they go, yeah. unfortunately, and you know, mostly they did, put a, light, they did put a light there, so. Yeah. You, know, I, I, you see those uh, barrels around, sir. Yeah. yeah. Barrels and whatnot. Yeah. I don't know if anything like that would help, but there's one or two that are particularly susceptible to that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's that's basically, that concludes my report. If you have any questions, your elements, Mr. Chair. Yeah, so I just, uh, I wish I could remember his name. So last Friday, uh, across the street from my house, uh, for some reason, I don't know, I can't remember if it was weather related, but a huge branch just broke and right. fell over and fell on top of the wires so I called the the, uh, the control center and um, I have to say it was amazing that I, I told them the neighbor in the house didn't even realize that they were getting showered and I just happened to be in the garage and they have three little girls uh, all you know under 10 in the house so I was worried they were going to come out and I wasn't sure which which wires were which were the were, were it fell the wires didn't fall but the branch was resting on it but it happened about eight thirty and by ten the branch is removed and uh, the gentleman I wish I could remember his name is a really nice uh, gentleman and he he did he cleared up the situation left the, the debris there I guess as a follow up uh, right. truck that comes from the right. tree department or something yeah. or maybe it's a tent but by ten o'clock. All, the only oh, reason you know, something home. fell, it was a little, you know, <laughs> piece of the tree. You could tell a branch yeah. fell off. So it was really terrific response. So, but immediately when that happened, we saw that on the outage management system yeah. at the skater room. So we figured something major must have happened because there was a large area that showed it there out of power, and then. Uh, Oh, without power? Without power, right. Okay. Well, it showed that there, there was some type of trouble. Yeah. And yeah, I wish I... You don't know who the person was. He was really... Uh, Maybe it was... Um, I believe it was... No, it was in the morning. It was 8.30, Friday morning. 8.30, probably Steve Smith or maybe one of the guys. No. Right. It Steve Smith. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I want, oh, yeah I'd, I'd like to send him a thank you note, too, because I know my neighbor was very appreciative because they were both leaving the, the, they had to go someplace with the kids and you know having a tree uh, that was a second thing in the, in the course of a couple of months the, earlier in the month right. or the month before one of the cable wires fell it was strung from one side of the street to right. the other and I was driving down the street and right. it was like uh, getting uh, you know less <laughs> it hit my car but the car went under it but wow. the wires hanging there I didn't know it was a cable wire so I was on my way to a, a, a board meeting at the Y, and uh, of course, you don't want to leave it there. Someone could be running or driving and, and have trouble. But right. again, they came back by very quickly and uh, re resolved it. So, hopefully, that's it for your Crescent Road. I think it's time to pass along to Avalon. Or, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. But, anyways, yeah, if you could let me know, calling up. I get the names for you. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I guess we so got now one bit this time. <laughs> Get your check. You want to check for cover out again? <laughs> yeah. You made the motion. Move that IFB 2019 14 for hourly rates for professional manpower vehicles, trade tools, and equipment for underground electrical, ele electrical distribution, construction, and maintenance be awarded to McDonald Electrical Corporation pursuant to uh, Mass General Laws Chapter 30. Section 39M as the lowest responsible and eligible bidder for the estimated three year toll of $478,734.05 on the recommendation of the general manager. Second. Uh, discussion? Sure. This is the underground electrical distribution, construction, and maintenance bid that uh, you know we are hiring the country. You know, we have contractors, underground contractors that they're helping us to fix a lot of these underground uh, developments, uh, URDs, as well as, you know, the getaways out of the substations here, there. 
So we send the bit to 16 uh, bidders basically, and three they responded, and the lowest uh, bidder was uh, not qualified because they didn't have the high voltage uh, experience. So that's why you see that you know the all pro electric LLC uh, came the lowest, but they didn't meet the requirements. Uh, the next uh, successful bidder, uh, responsible, responsive bidder was the McDonald Electric. Uh, these are the same contractors that we have currently, and uh, they they obviously were very happy with the performances. So uh, that's why that it was awarded to McDonald Electric Corporation. Uh, for that amount now. This also, uh, I gotta mention that uh, the bid is for the hours, if you want to know, it's approximately 710 uh, hours of straight time and about 125 hours of overtime. So, uh, not necessarily, those are not guaranteed. So, whenever we need them, we use them. If we don't need them, you know. We're not going to use them. So basically, that's how it goes. So the charity won't end up spending this amount. This is like an approved amount, but it could be less depending yes, on what the it use could is. Be less than, right. How many responses did you get from this? We got three only. Three. The three of them, the three were uh, All Pro Electric, McDonald Electric, and Power Line contractors. And Power Line came substantially higher at almost $60,000. And the difference between the lowest bidder and uh, highest bidder was approximately seven thousand dollars. Yeah. So, so only seven thousand. Only seven thousand, but they didn't uh, qualify because they they were low voltage rated, not for high voltage. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Ready for a vote? Ready for a vote? Yeah. All in favor? <laughs> All opposed? Zero. And uh, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned before that. Obviously, Dave Hennessy is not here tonight, but he's at a funeral, so I don't know if I have to explain why he's not here. But that's why we're one short tonight. So, 4-0. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks mate. Okay. Any other discussion or? No. Oh. Okay. So then, uh, in general, or is we got yeah. sure in general, general discussion. Yeah, I just had a. Uh, not from you and me specifically. I just uh, I hadn't seen anything. Uh, going back to the battery storage, I hadn't seen anything in the Chronicle, and I, I know that depends on a lot of uh, things. But uh, uh, is there any other releases? I mean, that to me, having been there and seeing seeing what went on and understanding the the magnitude of the the grant and its impact, it just seems like um, we should get that story out. Uh, as many ways as we can. And there maybe is already things in the motion, but I just wanted to mention that. I can defer to Chuck, but uh, it, Nextera um, was the one that hired or brought their photographer with them, and they had been yeah. writing up some press release, waiting to get the pictures right. from them. I, I don't, I'm not sure where Hamid um, bootlegged this copy, but uh, we hadn't really seen much. So yeah, Chuck I noticed Nextera, he made me uh, look uh, older, uh, so I need to talk to him offline to picture. Yeah. 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 Is Joyce preparing the? Uh, we also have, uh, um, what, which will be interesting as well, is a um, a time lapse video of the construction. Well, but cool. it has to it has to go through Nextera to vet it before we can put it on there. Well, so we great. have some interesting things we want to put online, yeah. but no, I think uh, we're, we're just, we have to coordinate yeah. with them as part of the contract before we start posting right. stuff. Yeah. Now that, I mean, just to hear the all the positive remarks from the. Uh, right. People from uh, the state house and, and everywhere was really in all the constituents. Good. Chuck Tom. Yeah, go check. Did you have a question for Chuck Tom or no? Uh, about you know. press release, so Chuck. he's going to answer that. Oh, I, I know that Joyce had uh, prepared some announcements on it, and those had gone out in advance, um, and that people were invited. Uh, I'm not sure that she's gotten back the uh, photos uh, to sort of do a, uh, a comprehensive uh, story on that, but I will follow yeah. up with her. Yeah, good. Yeah. I think it's a great story. There was, there was a video from Norcam, too, so I don't know what the status of that one is to eat at this point. Neither do I. <laughs> okay. but I'll, I'll, I'll follow up with Joyce and find out. Joyce, because that was the video. The, that was the cable TV from North Reading, the okay. system that was there. Yeah. 
filming. Good. Thanks, Chuck. All right. Um, with that, so our next scheduled meeting is Thursday the 19th. Um, and Thursday the... That was 19th of September. Oh, September. September, right? Yeah, we might have, we might end up calling one sooner, but that's what's now. Yeah, yeah, no, I know what. Right. Yeah. I typically don't have one another. Yeah. I'd say that I might not call three or four meetings just to do it. But like five hour meetings or yeah, just yeah. at least. Yeah. That'd be great. Um, but right now, I think I'm sick in August. That time. <laughs> this is a very serious position. I that the, uh, the cab meeting was scheduled for the 19th as well, yeah. right? So yeah. it's going to be coordinated the same yeah. way. Yeah, that seems to be working out well. I think it does. Yep. Okay. Um, with that, you ready for the motion to go into executive session? Yes. Chair? Yes. Move that the board go into executive session to consider the purchase of real estate and to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining and to return to regular session for the sole purpose of adjournment. Second. All in favor, I guess we need roll call, right? Mr. 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 Aye. Aye. Mr. Stempeck, aye. 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 Very good. Thanks. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Chuck. Yep.